In this video, we're going to be looking at three tips to manage sickness absence. So the first thing that we can think about is having clear policies and procedures. The first reason for having this is one, you keep consistency. One of the main reasons that employers fail in successfully defending litigated claims is because they haven't followed uh, procedures. But the reason that a lot of employers uh, managers haven't had a chance to follow those procedures is because they have had no policies in place to begin with. So get in touch with the lawyer, have some clear procedures and guidelines set out. Helpfully, they ought to be in the same line as the ACAS guidelines too. The reason to do this is you keep consistency. And secondly, it protects against subjectivism as well. By that, I mean you won't have one manager looking at things differently with one member of staff than another because of potentially their relationship with that particular member of staff and also if it gets litigated it means that as an employer you are able to show that you've carried out a fair procedure if you have an employee who for example claims that there's been some kind of breach of contract or unfair procedure which may have led to an unfair dismissal secondly be aware of disability discrimination. Now, for the purposes of the Equality Act 2010, uh, it defines disability in a way that may be different to how we may use the word disability or disabled in a general public sort of sense. Now, the way that the Equality Act puts it is, to paraphrase, if someone has a condition which may significantly affect their, adversely affect their day-to-day -day normal activities. And that can include things like stress or anxiety. It doesn't necessarily always have to be something that you may see or something that may be popularly known. The reason I'm saying that we need to be aware of this is that if you are an employer, you have a duty to make reasonable adjustments for your employee if they may or indeed if they do have a disability. This is a conversation which should not be entirely employee-led. Uh, employers should get into the habit of opening and continuing these discussions with their employees and seeing what reasonable adjustments can be made. Now what is a reasonable adjustment? What does that look like? Well that entirely depends on the individual and indeed on the disability itself. And that's why one of the important things to have is that conversation. Thirdly, if an employee may be found on holiday or even be seen playing sport or carrying out some sort of hobby while they're saying that they are not fit enough to work, then that does not necessarily mean that that employee is lying. Now, unless of course the employee is saying that they have uh, an issue with the back and they're unable to walk and then there's evidence of them playing football. I'm not talking about that. But we know that, for example, things like stress or anxiety, uh, doctors and or medical practitioners often prescribe things like carrying out a hobby or sport or indeed even taking some time out away, whether that's abroad or otherwise, to aid their well-being and in many ways their mental health. So. Uh, there needs to be a lot more investigation that takes place. Of course, each case is different and everything turns on its own facts. But this is something that employers need to ensure. Don't make a knee-jerk reaction when it comes to things like this in this particular context. Now, those are the three things that employers ought to be thinking about. There are plenty of other things, some of which can be found on uh, the magaralaw.co.uk website uh, but things that you maybe need to think about are things like uh, permanent health insurance whether any decision that is made by staff may affect your employer's liability uh, compulsory insurance and much more so check it out on the website details are below uh, or feel free to email me at roy at magaralaw.co.uk thank you